What's up guys, Spencer here. We got uh, Adam Drake here doing a video for you guys at the Dirt Natural Challenge. Um, today we're gonna be talking about some of the latest and greatest um, setup tips for running e-buggy and e-truggy. Um, Adam's gonna be talking about some of the things that he's been learning since joining Hobby Wing um, with the motors between the two cars, the batteries. Adam, if you wanna go ahead and let us know what you think. Uh, it's been awesome. It's been a really cool transition. Um, on Buggy, I'm running pretty much the same setting that uh, Spencer and Ryan run, um, using the new G3 Pro with 2200 kV motor. Um, but one of the things in testing leading up to DNC, Spencer was running the Truggy motor and uh, did a little bit of testing after Ryan and I ran at Motorama using the Buggy um, 2200 motor. So you can share a little information on kind of what he thought between the Truggy motor and the Buggy motor. You can use, obviously, the Truggy motor if you need more overall power, but a lot of the times the conditions get rough and yep. the Buggy motor is a little bit smoother, easier to drive, but still with plenty of power. Right. Yeah, like Adam was saying, the between the two setups um, in the speed control settings, running the same is pretty common. Um, over the over the weekend before DNC, I was running the 2250 kV Hobby Wing motor, um, which has been traditional over the years that we've all ran. Like it's truggy, you probably need more power. But we're actually starting to find out that um, with the big batteries, the amount of um, setup stuff that you can do with the speed control, the, the turbo timing, the boost, that you really start to have a lot of wheel spin. And um, with the electric truck, which is probably the more popular class um, out here in Southern California and even like the PMB and AMS, that um, wheel spin is, is actually not that good. You have um, a lot more heat building up and that was some of the things that I was testing with at Thunder Alley. Um, the biggest things that I noticed dropping down the 2200 kV motor and truck was um, the, the bottom end and mid power band was so much smoother that I was actually able to kind of increase the throttle rate in the speed control, which um, for the track like this at the Dirt Nitro Challenge, the double, double, double sections made it so much more easier to um, hit it every lap and the consistency. Like you're not like doing the double, double, double section. You're like, oh crap, I just quadded by accident or you're getting all squirmy and feeling like your car has not that much traction. You can actually use the full range of the trigger. Right, using good. the full range of the trigger is something that I really thought that was so much more utilized than the 2250. Now. If you are in a circumstance where you do need a lot of power to make some crazy jump or, um, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure if any, now that we can tune the speed control with the turbo and boost, if I would even, would go back to that, um, unless you feel like you could see something going down. Yeah, unless it was just some insanely high grip with a jump that you just needed every bit of power to do but normally especially at the bigger races there's so many entries the track gets bumpy yeah. it's a little bit looser the other thing that makes it nice is that the transition between like at this event we're running four classes so between nitro buggy electric buggy nitro truck electric truck we want to have similar driving feeling yep. even though the electric cars maybe have more overall power yep. we want to still be able to use that same range of the trigger right um, so that going from class to class isn't like you know just completely different flow. yeah you know another thing that I wanted to touch bases on with the video um, I know people are gonna be asking with the um, settings that we have what is your most common setting that you used or utilize since switching to hobby wing um, for running e truggy and e buggy or is it the throttle right your your more popular setting that you like to change from track to track or is it the throttle frequency because i feel like in my opinion i like to tune as of recently especially with 10 scale the throttle rate has been something that i've been tuning with a lot and here i'm running 28 between both classes um obviously you've been running something similar um, since you started, first started joining Hobby Wing, but what's your favorite setting that you like? With so, I, obviously I'm new, so I haven't kind of gone through everything I'm learning as I go, but I'm running 25 for the throttle rate. Between buggy and truck, uh, my settings are very similar, except yeah. um, my boost is a little bit higher. Um, I think I have no boost and 10 degrees of turbo for buggy, and in truck I have five for the boost right. and the turbo is at 10. And then the other thing that I changed on the truck just to have a little bit more feel for like the low speed with the brakes, 
is my brake frequency yeah. is 1,000 on truck, 2,000 on buggy. Right. And then I just run a little bit lower EPA on my radio. I, I want to go in and even customize and try like maybe um, 1.5 yep. um, for the brakes. Um, just to kind of fine tune and, and do that once I run Truggy a little bit more. Yeah, no, I mean with all the settings that we have, it can get a little overwhelming for um, us racers and even people that are just new, even people that are experienced for the most part. But um, one of the things that I also want to bring up on the video was the buggy motor. A lot of people that have been running e-buggy kind of, you know, they go with like the 1900 kV, which we also offer, and then of course the 2200. When I first joined Hobby Wing, I was always a 1900 kV kind of person. I always wanted to be super smooth, just to not have the wheel spin. But one thing that I noticed with like the 10 minute mains, um, especially being on the gas so hard, um, not that it's a it's a bad thing for the 1900, but the uh, the efficiency of the 1900 kV, I feel like draws more more power, more heat, and more milliamps with the batteries. Because you're having to run a little bit more aggressive setting with the ESC. Exactly. So, with it, because I also started with a 1900. Um, I actually put a 1900 in Rhonda's car and a 2200 in my car. Yep. Um, and I was able to get the feeling really close to the same between the two. But the nice thing with running the 2200 is it's slightly overpowered. So then you can run a little bit more conservative ESC settings. And then that ends up making everything run a little bit more efficient and cooler. Um, because I've, I've ex explained that to some people and they're like, well, that doesn't make sense. It's higher KV, it's gotta be drawing more, which with the same settings, yes, the 2200 may be overpowered yeah. or run a little bit hotter, but we're able to run smoother settings. And then especially when you go to a track like PMB, where it's just massive, huge straightaway, you're not having to like run an excessive amount of turbo exactly. or pull a lot of gear. With a 1900, with a 2200, you have plenty, right. plenty of power. Also, to add between the two cars, um, and not many people that um, are driving out there running the electric classes, we tune a lot with EPA. Like especially in e-buggy, I am going for anywhere from, to be honest, for the most most of the time, I'm never at 100. percent I'm either from like 96 to 92 percent um, on the radio range just as far as like um, how much power I really need. Unless you're at a PMB, you really need the full straightaway speed, the jumps. But one of the things that's underutilized for the people that are normally running e-truck or e-buggy is um, people think, oh, I need to run 100%, I need to have all the power. Um, but you don't, it's actually more drivable, more drivable, it's easier to drive, and uh, it's definitely a hell of a lot more fun out there, especially when you actually have traction. Because um, I've been out there practicing here with you guys, with Ryan, and had 100%. And I'm just like, man, I just have no traction. You know, you or Ryan's like, just go down to like 92%. Go down to 92%, boom, all of a sudden, like way different car. Like your suspension works different, you have more traction, it's easier to drive. But like I said, it's not always the case, like you're gonna get that answer, but it's obviously track dependent. And um, one of the key, you know, pro tips that I feel like we can offer for you guys. Um, one last thing that we can talk about is the batteries, what batteries you're running in your car. And, yeah. Um, so I have the uh, Protec 6400 4S Shorty battery. I'm using the same battery for both truck and buggy. Um, everyone kind of runs a little bit different setup. Like you have the saddle packs. Yeah. It looks like you have the larger saddle packs for truck and I'm assuming shorties, or do you run the big batteries for, for buggy as well? Yeah, for the truck I run the, um, the long 6800 milliamp batteries and then for the e-buggy the e I run the 6400 milliamp Protec batteries. Um, it's obviously, um, you know, pick your poison. For the e-truggy, I thought like the little bit heavier pack um, in the back just kind of help with a little bit more traction. Um, but of course, depending on if you're running buggy or not, um, you know, I like it a little bit with the shorter batteries. But again, it's all uh, about the options that you have. And you know, with the 10 minute mains, I was also a little bit scared that the truggy wasn't gonna make it. I saw um, Aiden actually, a couple people kind of um, shut off at the end, whether if it was, um, you know, heat protection wasn't on or ran out of milliamps, but we were all able to finish our runs and um, have some fun out there and it was a, a good time. So um, thank you, Adam, for coming on, doing the video for us. And uh, thanks to Hannah behind, behind the uh, camera for uh, helping out. And thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you guys on the next one.